Tim Watke, thanks so much for being on my show today. It's a true honor to have you on. I feel like you're someone that I get so inspired by and motivated by. I highly look up to you and you might be thinking like, what the heck? <laughs> but, but I really do. You're, um, I've seen your story for the past probably 12 or so years and it's been absolutely incredible what you have accomplished. So um, welcome, Tim. Well, thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. It's an honor. Uh, so just so everybody knows a little bit of the background and how I know Tim. Um, well, first of all, Tim is a huge real estate investor, uh, developer, and just a very, very smart guy. <laughs> uh, and I met, yeah, I met Tim about, I would say maybe 12 plus years ago through the real estate business. Um, we actually got introduced to each other through um, Renzo Tori, isn't that right? You were yeah, doing a yeah. lot of short sales. Short sales, uh -huh. yeah. And so Renzo was a real estate agent, and um, it was when the market had crashed, so the short sell, you know, world was happening, and um, Tim was just buying all kinds of things. <laughs> and then um, that's how we were introduced to each other, and then we've kept in touch uh, throughout the years. We almost actually did business when going to business together in the title world as a side like business project for you mm -hmm. but um that didn't quite work out obviously <laughs> but i know you want nothing to do with title <laughs> nowadays yeah I'm glad it, um, didn't I'm glad it was it was fun but i'm glad it didn't work out in hindsight so i think we're both better yeah. off without going <laughs> so. yeah for sure so um tim you have some huge projects going on right now i know you have the Maven District and then Maven District Part Two, mm -hmm. um, which is around the Ninth and Ninth area, and I want to hear about all of that. But before we get into all the business aspect, I would love to start off with just giving you the opportunity to share your story because there's, I, I just love hearing successful people's stories, and of course, I just want to know all about you. So, <laughs> tell us a little bit about yourself. All right. Well, I'll start my the, the basic stuff. I'm, um, I'm, I'm from Detroit, but I've been in Utah for about 21 years now. And I moved out here after college to ski. And it was supposed to just be for a few months and I never left. So I'm 21, late, 21 years later, I'm still here. Um, but before that, um, my I didn't family, know you were an East Coast guy. Well, Midwest, Michigan. Oh, is it, is it still considered Midwest? Yeah, it's Midwest. It's east of here, but yeah, Midwest. Um, so um, my, 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 my father was a college professor, and he saw an infomercial late one night, this is back in the 80s, about flipping homes or you know, some sort of real estate guru teaching an infomercial. And he actually bought the course. And as a college professor, he, he ended up buying a, uh, a house in Detroit to, for us to flip as a family. And I remember being eight years old and that's when I started working for my dad. And the big joke is that's when we, we used to use a, a heat gun to remove lead-based paint. And turns out now that was probably a bad idea, but we didn't know back then. So anyway, <laughs> that, that's when it all started. And with me in my real estate, career, if you will, or at least my journey. And all through middle school, high school, I worked for my dad on his real estate properties. And he was still a college professor, but then he started buying uh, properties on the side. Um, and then eventually that became his main job and he retired from the college and just did real estate full time. All along, um, I was, you know, the whole family was involved, my brother and my mom. And when I was 16, I bought a duplex in Detroit um, with seller financing. So that was my first landlord you know, um, entry into owning my own properties. And that's, since then, that's incredible. Like, do you realize yeah. that most people, I mean, yeah, no one gets, no one's gets started that early. So like, that's amazing that you, you literally grew up with it. It was weird. Yeah. And it was, and it was bizarre buying something at 16 when, you know, everyone else is worried about much different. All my friends and peers are worried about other things than, than the mortgage and, and tenants and all that. So right. it was good and bad. And I remember, I think there's definitely a time when I was working a lot 
in the summer on my stuff and my dad's stuff and all my friends were having fun or being a lifeguard somewhere and I was you know doing construction with my dad on his rentals but turned out to work out okay um and then through fast forward through college uh, I bought a couple properties and I had I built a couple of spec homes so I was, I was still in real estate and you know just definitely on the side I was uh, I got a degree in construction management so that turned out to be helpful, but not definitely not mandatory by any means, but that was a good enough degree for what I'm doing. Um, so I moved to Utah for to be a ski bum for a season and ended up staying, as I mentioned. And that was the, now we're in the early 2000s. And that's when stuff really took off. Um, once I decided I was gonna stay, I was waiting tables at night. And then I started buying you know, uh, flips and fixer uppers in Salt Lake City. And I would work on the flips. How, how old were you by this uh, time? When 22, 23, okay. yeah, 23, probably. Um, I would wait tables at night. And then, you know, from 6 a.m. until 2 p.m., I'd work on the flips in Salt Lake City. I was still living in Park City at the time. And, you know, it just kind of skyrocketed from there. You know, I was doing one flip at a time, then two, then three. And then I finally quit my waiting tables job and was able to do a handful of flips at a time. And um, all along during those flips, I was keeping maybe every other or, yeah, probably every other or so I was keeping as a rental. Um, so that, that turned out to be really beneficial uh, in the long term. Uh, the Great Recession came and at the time I had 60 or so doors and as, as rentals. And that's what really kept me alive. I mean, everyone else I knew was wow. losing everything. And a lot of real estate guys didn't do very well during the recession. But I had, you know, I, I, I really attribute it to having all those rental properties, you know, going into 2008, 2009. And I was, I was in good shape. So made it through the recession. The, rental, the rentals obviously is, are always the solid, more safe. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's really the... It's, it's, it's not that sexy. It's not that exciting, but you know, it, it, it's, it seems like when I look back at what, what really got, it, what really got me the most wealth, it's owning property for a long time. That's, that's really the, the quick and dirty because, you know, yeah, there's, I got some equity by forced appreciation by uh, sweat equity and things like that, but really the big equity growth, if you look at everything over the last 28 years, it's from owning property for a long time, period. And just letting the tenants pay the mortgage and the market appreciate and, and refinancing and, and cash out refinance again and refinance again and, and, and repeat. So that's really what I've been doing. But that's, I remember when we met for launch a little, a couple of months ago and like that really stuck with me, the, the refinancing and- Refinance, yeah, and there's- there's a strategy called the Burr strategy, which is which is B R R R. So it's buy, remodel, re buy, remodel, re rent, refinance, repeat. So the Burr strategy is, is something I've been doing for a long time before it was even called the Burr strategy. So, but let me re, let me rewind back. I was uh, made it through the recession, and then that's kind of when we met at the end of the recession. I was buying a lot of short sales, and I was flipping a lot of homes and. My best year, we flipped about 30, 30, 35 homes. So, and that was fun. And the flipping, it was, well, kind of fun. It was good money, but it was a full-time job. And it, I mean, it was more than a job. I, mean, I, was, I was working 60, 70 hours a week and I was doing, I was doing way too much. I mean, I had to, I had to find three homes every month um, to buy and I had to sell two or three homes every month to keep all the wheels rolling. So it was good, but it was a, just a job. I, I wasn't that part of my career. I was not really investing. It was just a, you know, I was selling a product and, you know, I, and every, every month I had to find three new products to sell. Um, that's when I really started to appreciate, you know, I look back at what was making me the most money and what has, and it's like I said earlier, it was the rentals and owning rentals. Uh, and that's where the impetus came when I got into multifamily and commercial and, you know, I was able to 1031 exchange, which is a tax deferred exchange. I was able to sell a handful of rentals uh, and put all of that. Wait, before we move on to, sorry, before we move on to this part of your life, um, when you, when you had the 60 homes and it, it was 
during the recession. And I'm sure that some listeners are wondering, especially if maybe perhaps they're newer into this world, how were you able to have 60 homes and like get them all financed, right? Right. So it was so 60 doors. So sorry, that was yeah. okay. So uh, probably about 30 to 40 of those were apartments, um, you know, eight units, 10 units, 14 units, things like that. And the rest were single, the rest were single family homes. So I had lots, and so this was a lot of these were bought before the recession. So I had lots of the mortgages that don't that don't exist anymore. So owner, not owner occupied stated income mortgages. So I had lots <laughs> of those. Uh, but you know, they were all adjustable rate right? and they all actually were adjusting down. So it wasn't, you know, there was no troubles there. And then uh, I wasn't highly leveraged, so it wasn't anything too scary at the time. And you know, and rents didn't go up, but they didn't go down because as people were losing their homes, they still have to rent some, they have to live somewhere. So actually, I mean, there are some properties that rents, you know, stayed stable or even increased just because you, you know people are losing their homes, so they have to, you know, rents are there's more demand for rents for rental houses. So you know, some of the rents did increase or at least didn't go down. So. Uh, but anyway, that, that, yeah, so that's, that's so various, you know, some of these units, um, either financed by local banks or just regular conventional, um, you know, stated income type loans back in the day. Um, but when I got kind of burnt out from flipping, that's when I decided I need to get rid of these single family homes. Um, so I was able to sell a hand, you know, the market was strong come 2012, 13, 14, 15, the market was really strong. It's been strong here in Utah for the last eight years it seems like it keeps going up and up and up but i was able to sell a bunch of homes um at about the same time um that were single family rentals and with that it allowed me to do some tax deferred exchanging which is called a 1031 exchange i was able to put all the equity into multiple properties into larger commercial buildings and multifamily properties so that's really when uh things got exciting when i was able to convert a bunch of single families into, um, you know, an office building, mixed use building, larger apartment buildings. Um, and from since then, you know, then the snowball started rolling, you know, the snowball was always growing and rolling, but it grows a lot faster and it's more exciting when there's a larger basis to grow and roll and accelerate. So. Well, and, and not to mention the compound effect of you getting started so young. Yeah. Like- yeah. That's amazing. Like how you said, I, I'm just still like, so impressed by that, that you were 16 years old. Yeah. Like you got your first. Yeah. I, I, most 16 year olds are not doing yeah. that. Yeah. understand this world. So I it, it's fascinating. At, our, at the dinner tables growing up, you know, we were talking <laughs> about, it was, we, you know, good news, bad news. I mean, all our family, all we talked about was real estate. So, I mean, you know, you know, growing up at the dinner table, that's what we talked about was refinancing or usually tenant stories or, you know, remodeling stories. And that's just, you know, so it was good. It brought the family close in that sense, you know, but you know, that was, that was our thing, you know, so yeah. I, I didn't have a choice really. So <laughs> it was by default and that, was, what, a, yeah. what a great thing to have in life for sure. Yeah. So that's, that's the short story. And then the last five, six years have been heavily involved in, I have no more single family homes. Um, I have apartment buildings, and mixed use buildings with uh, storefronts, offices um, in, you know, mostly in Salt Lake City. I have a little bit of product out of state, but most of it's in Salt Lake City proper. And now we're working on growing the Maven District, which is a uh, mixed use. uh, We have housing, we have um, offices, restaurants, um, all in one block and we're expanding that block to across the street. Um, and we also have another satellite location that's about a, a mile to the West. So we're keeping, and that's all called the Maven. It's a Maven brand. We're keeping that Maven brand going. And a lot of our, the coolest thing about what we're doing there, most of our office and retail tenants are startups or first time businesses or, you know, just getting on their feet. And about 80% of them are women-owned businesses. So it's pretty exciting. Woo! Yeah, and that just- you're, you're very you're very into the women's support. Yeah, I know this so my wife, your run, wife, right? <laughs> yeah, my, wife, my wife runs that that side. That's her her passion, supporting and, and you know, giving women a, 
a place to start the business and you know she does mentoring and all that too so but yeah that was a that was a um we didn't plan on that it just it kind of happened that all you know we were just attracting a certain clientele and and you know like i said most of them turned out to be woman owned and now we're really going going all in on, on the woman owned businesses and trying to attract more and and you know help help them grow and become have a small business become a large business so that's that's amazing um I wasn't kind of non-intentional in it, in it. Yeah. Yeah. Load that way. That's really, yeah. Cool. yeah. So what is it, um, you know, and I feel like if someone's listening and they're interested in reaching out in regards to this Maven district and perhaps looking at space there, what, what would be a way that they could contact to see if something's available? Oh, sure. They could email me. Um, you want me to give you that email address now? Sure. So yeah. Go ahead and share it. Yeah, my email is Tim, so T I M, at Rise SLC, which is R I S E S L C dot com. Awesome. Rise is the name of my development company. But. That's wonderful. So I, I feel like you're, I think at one point I told you, like, Tim, you're buying all of Utah. Um, <laughs> so I'm interested to know, like, what is, what is like the future plan for you? What is it that you're wanting to do next? A good question. Um, I don't want to buy all of Utah, just the good stuff in Salt Lake City. <laughs> no, you know, I think uh, I love apartments. So we, I, I end up doing a lot of mixed use that has the office and the retail. And um, but my 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 true love is apartments, and you know, building apartments is fun. And I've, I've done a handful of ground up developments, but. I really like to reposition and remodel existing old apartments. Um, recently, we've been buying um, 100 year old, 120 year old buildings, 30, 30 unit buildings, 26 unit buildings, things like that, that ha- are just hammered in, you know, been in horrible shape. But we, what we are specialized now is, is remodeling those buildings and, you know, we'll spend we'll spend $30,000, $40,000 a, a unit on the remodel, but, you know, we'll, we'll double the rents and make them better, safer, cleaner than they ever have been. And that's really my, my passion right now is, is remodeling existing product, you know, of, of we'll call it 10 units to and bigger, you know, but we've been in the sweet spot recently, 20 and 30 units. And that's, you know, in the avenues and in older historic districts of Salt Lake city, that's what we really like to do right now. So. But, awesome. So yeah, more, more value add, old value add, the more work, the better. That's where we seem to excel. And we have a construction company that is, that we are able to self-perform most of our construction. So, you know, that we just, just do work for our own properties. So it's easy to get the remodeling done. It's, it's just harder to find the right project. So. Right. Right. So, I mean, many of our listeners are um, in the real estate industry. So if they find something, they should also reach out to you, perhaps. Of course. Yes. I love, <laughs> yeah, I'm a broker. I've been a broker for almost 18 years now. And I love paying commissions to other brokers and agents that, that bring me stuff. So yeah, I, I rarely, I rarely find my own projects. It's usually someone brings them to me. So I, I love it when that happens. So, but yeah, nice. so now you have multifamily in Salt Lake. That's, that's what we're always looking for. That's awesome. So I'm going to, I'm going to shift uh, here to, into a different route. I, I would love to hear, you know, personally, like, what is it that drives you? I know that you got started really young. I know that these conversations were within your family. So you grew up with the real estate world, but there, there still has to be some sort of fire within you and to be so driven and ambitious to creating more and more. What do you think that is? And where does that come from? I don't, I don't know. That's a good question. I was going to ask you that if you knew for me, but no, I don't know. Uh, I think it's, it's, it's the challenge. I like the challenge. I really like um, it, improving, you know, starting with nothing or and starting with a, an old beat up building and, and making into something special and new and, and worth more, you know, that's always exciting. And that's, that was, that was fun back in the flipping days. You know, it was cool to buy a meth house and, you know, turn it into a, a great house for a family. So I've always liked that part. And, and now, yeah, I think the transformation is probably what drives me just the, 
you know, the before and after and not so much the pictures, just like the the situation before and then what what we created it into. You know, I think that's that's where that gets exciting. You know, it's, like the transformation of something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The caterpillar turning into a butterfly. You know, <laughs> you, so just a side like fun uh, fun thing to talk about is that I my house that I own, I bought. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. That's right. Yeah, you actually that was one of my last. Well, that was one of the last residential flips uh, that, that I've done. So yeah, that was that's when I was waning, getting burnt out from flipping and buying and moving more into commercial multifamily. So and yeah. it was and and how that happened, it was hilarious because I just texted you and said, Tim, do you happen to have anything in Sugar House? Yeah. And you did, and it was perfect. I I mean, you were still under construction in the middle of remodeling, and I just went and looked, and I'm like, this is it. I mean, it was like instant. Yeah. Um, so yeah, yeah. So everyone knows my house was a temp- so far so good, right? We we don't we only had a, a thirty day warranty, not a so yeah. That's all. <laughs> and I love the house, by the way. It's good, still good. amazing. Um, okay, so you're you're wanting to find more apartment buildings. That's kind of your your focus and your and your passion and, and things. How about? More on a personal note, like what is it that is fun for you and what is it that fulfills you in life? Well, a couple things. So I have I have a four-year-old, almost four-year-old daughter, and I have another daughter that's scheduled to be born in early January. So um, uh, congrats. Married and I have a, a great wife. And you know, so I, I love I know it sounds cliche, but you know, doing the stuff with the family and you know, it's especially with having the one daughter and the other, I'm really excited to have another daughter. So that's really exciting for me. And I like to mountain more bike. More women, more yeah, women into your world. <laughs> and everywhere, you know, um, but mountain biking and, and riding bikes is my thing too. So, you know, there's, it, you know, I, I don't work. Um, I'd say I feel like right, right now, I think I have a good work-life balance. I'm definitely not doing any more than 40 hours a week. I mean, it's probably usually less and, I'm working from home right now and, you know, I'm typically, I'm able, you know, I'm going to go for a mountain bike ride after this call. So I'm able to pretty much make my own schedule and, you know, there's no longer, um, there's no sense of urgency for, there's really not much urgency for anything really. I mean, I'm, you know, so my stress levels are much lower than they were uh, before, especially when I was managing, you know, all my properties are managed by property managers now. So. I'm not getting tenant calls. I'm not dealing with tenants at all. And that's, that's been great for my life. So, but yeah, I think, you know, just yeah, spending time with family and, you know, biking, exercise and camping. I was just in Moab last weekend, mountain biking with some friends. And, you know, so that, that's, that's the kind of stuff I like to do. You'll know, go to Park City and mountain bike and things like that. Skiing is my big thing. I moved out here to ski. Um, I don't ski, I still ski a lot, but you know, when I first moved here, I was skiing 50, 80, day, 80 days a year. And now it's, 10 to 15. So it's still fun, but now we're getting our daughter into skiing. So it's fun to go with yeah. her. And, you know, she's already skiing at, at, you know, she was skiing last year at three. So it's cute. So that's way cute. So, um, and, and I have to point out, I mean, it's nice that now you've been able to leverage your time and like really focus on what you want to do to just do the 40 hours. Mm-hmm. But I just think it's, um, fascinating how most people see you and they probably see your life and they're like, Oh, I want, Oh, Tim's life is so wonderful and amazing. And he's so success, su- successful and, and all that comes with that. But, you know, everyone wants the glory, but they don't see the sacrifice and everything that you've had to do for so many years. So it's awesome that you're now only working 40 hours a week, but I know for a fact that it's been a oh. long time of hustle, grind, sacrifice like sleepless nights yes i, I want to talk about that for a minute because like that's what it takes to get to to where you're at it's, it's yeah. not an overnight thing right no that's that's so true yeah the reason why i'm able to take this call and work from home and in plan my own days however i want is because of i mean my mid-20s mid-20s till probably late 30s i mean yeah mid-20s to mid-30s for sure i mean i was working you know, especially I was doing everything, you know, when I had the rental properties, you know, I was, I was the landlord, I was the, 
uh, leasing agent. I was the electrician. I was the plumber. I was, oh my God. you know, the maintenance guy, the painter. I was doing everything. And, you know, yes, I had help. Um, you know, I always had employees helping and, and contractors and all that. But I was all, I mean, I worked six and a half days a week. And that was, it was tough. You know, I mean, I, I would work every Saturday for sure. And usually on Sunday, got to do something. You know, there's always something that had to be done. And, and that was tough. That was really tough on my marriage too. And, um, you know, it was good to stop doing that. So, you know, I, but yes, I did, I did put in the time and, you know, and looking back, I don't know if that was necessary, hundred percent necessary. Cause I, I don't, I don't think it's necessary to work, you know, 80 hours a week, you know, even, even when you're putting the time to grind. I mean, I think, I think there's looking back, there's things I could have done better, and I could have hired more people. I could have subbed out more things. I could I could have gotten property managers earlier, things like that. Where, you know, I don't think I don't think time time doesn't always equal. Um, what am I trying to say? Time just because you spend time doesn't mean it's time well spent. You know, it's yeah. time doesn't equal success. You know, it's if there's a smarter way to do it. You know, I think now I'm just working smarter, and you know, I'm not. I'm not doing everything myself and yes, you know, that's the big thing where, you know, I'm delegating and, and, you know, I'm doing the high level stuff. You know, I'm not, I'm not dealing with the things that someone else can deal with that I could pay them a lot less than my time is worth, you know? I think that that is such excellent advice. And people often ask me as well on, on that topic, you know, how do you do all the things you do? And I'm like, I'm a great delegator right, you know, right. and, and, and I've had to find ways to, to really let go of a lot of things. And as you grow, you let go of more and more important things and um, tr- just trusting a lot in people that they can. Yeah. And it's hard. It's, it's really hard because I'm, you know, I always think, you know, right or wrong that I could, I could do, I could do that better myself, you know, like, and, and I noticed when I, when I stepped away from the flipping, um, and I had more delegation on the, on the flipping business, you know, I think our quality went down, you know, but, you know, and I knew like it was, it was killing me because I knew like, oh, I was in there more involved. We could do it better. Like we used to, but I had, you have to get over that. It's really hard, you know, cause you could, I always think I could do everything better myself, but yeah. knowing that, you know, the 16 employees we have, they, you know, I can't do it all myself in this, like, if they can get it, I don't want to say get it good enough, but it's just releasing that control, you know, that, yes, you know, it might not be as, you know, no one's ever going to do it as well as the owner or someone that cares enough, you know, compared to an hourly employee, you know, but you just have to get over that. And, you know, it's, you know, can they get it close enough or 95% of what I can do and just trust the process and, and, let them do it because you'll never grow. I mean, it's, you know, without, like you said, without delegation, you know, you can only, there's only one of you. So if you can't multiply your time, you know, you can only work a certain number of hours period. So. Yeah. yeah. I think that's seriously like, so such good advice. You just, you just dropped. Um, so important for scaling, for growth and everything. And yeah. And any business, any business. Yeah. Uh, well, as we, we start to complete our, or, you know, have our ending of our time together, I do want to ask you a couple of questions uh, so that our listeners can uh, learn even more from you. So the first one that I have and wrote down is, um, what advice would you give to a newer investor on, you know, even on like how to learn more about this, um, where to get educated on what to do? Okay. Newer investor, I think the, I, I touched on this earlier. I think that it's holding property for a long time. I mean, that's, I can't stress that enough. I have some properties that I still own, you know, that I bought in the early 2000s in Park City, you know, um, or that I sold recently. And, you know, they've, they're rentals and they, they've not quadrupled, you know, whatever five or six times in value, I don't even know that word. Yeah, but way more than quadrupled in values that they've owned them. And the tenants have paid the mortgage the whole time. So having a handful of things like that, that, you know, the cash flow is not that exciting. Um, you know, even if you're buying in Salt Lake or, or pretty much most markets, it's hard to find a cash flowing uh, rental property or any property for that matter that, you know, the cash flow is not that exciting. If you can get a five, 6% return, that's, you know, that's 
not that exciting, but what is exciting is in 20 years or you know, 10 or 15 years, when you realize, wow, the tenant has paid your mortgage for you and the property has multiplied in value. You know, that so I think that my advice would be a holding property, you're getting in, you know, it's nice to flip, but that's just income. That's just a job. Flipping is just a job, it's not investing. Mm -hmm. So it's nice to get as much as you as many properties as you can and just hold them, you know, and single families are fine. You know, I'm obviously I'm more into multifamily and commercial, but even owning a house, you know, whatever you buy today, you know, is it gonna be worth more in two or three years? Who knows? Is it gonna be is it gonna be worth more in 20 years? Well, yeah, of course. So that's that's more the, you know, I'm not a get rich quick guy. It's it's for me. <laughs> what's that? That's the best advice. It's, it's not that's the best advice. It's not get rich quick. It's get rich for sure. And that's that's how you get rich for sure. You know, so I mean, think of your kids, young kids, and and you know, buy a house um, when you have a young child, and by the time they go to college, you know, you're gonna have a house that's almost paid off, mostly paid off, that's worth five times what you paid for it. I mean, that's that's how you get rich, and that's you know those. You know, where, where I think people usually start off, like there's a life cycle of investors or they start off wholesaling and then they get into flipping and then they finally start owning, you know. So if you could, you know, the sooner you can start owning, the better. And I would say don't worry about cash flow because it's all, cash flow is not that great. Like, no matter mm -hmm. what, you know, your cash on cash return is not that good, period. My cash on cash return is not that good on anything I own. You know, it's it's the appreciation it's it's the, being able to refinance and do the burst strategy when there's equity and then you get out equity cash you get out cash tax-free and then use that money and snowball that into the next property next projects you know so but you know you ask where do they find information i mean it's networking is good i'm not involved in the rias there's local real estate investing groups i i go occasionally but i know that's always a good spot to network there's lots of Facebook, uh, Facebook groups to network with, and you know, just getting out and meeting people that are doing what you want to do. Uh, but you know, it's yeah, kind of the obvious sources of, of how do you, you know, there's no there's no secret club that we all belong to. It's just <laughs> networking. I mean, and talking to people, to people like you. I mean, you you're, you're probably not as involved in the transactions that go through your office now, but you know, your restaurant officers are in just finding talking to those people to find out who's doing who's doing deals and how can i help you know, learn or how can i learn or how can i help someone else add value to someone else you know instead of just asking someone hey i i, I need help you know i'm more likely to uh, to help someone if they're offering value to me you know it's I, I don't really care for the the uh the invites of hey can i pick your brain you know like you know i don't <laughs> my brain gets picked enough and like you know it's more <laughs> But then I, I'm much more apt to, if someone asks, is offering how they can ask, offer me value, you know, it's not necessarily quid pro quo, but, um, you know, there's a, there's only so much time in the day and I, I'm, I, I want to use my time wisely. I think people that, that have the knowledge, you know, their, their time is very valuable. And if it's just, you know, someone that just wants to rattle off a hundred questions, um, you know, that's probably not the best, best way to do it. So, yeah. No, I, I fully agree. It's um, um, you, you get to a point where you can't be meeting with everyone who might need help. And I think that it's, it's a part of me, like, for example, I love to help people and I like, that's an obsession of mine, yeah. but I only have so much time. So yeah. when, when everyone's asking me, can I pick your brain? Can I meet with you? I'm like, I don't, I just don't, I can't. You know, right. it's like you get to a point, you got to say a lot of no's because you're so focused on your, your goals and what you're yeah. supposed to be doing. Yeah. So I love that you said that it's like, how do you bring value to someone instead of just saying, can I just pick your brain? It's like, what can you do for them that right. in return, they'd be willing to help you as well and, and help you back. And, um, and often, you know, if someone, well, what is that? And, you know, again, I don't want to sound like it's, you know, I won't, I'm not going to help anyone unless I get something in return. And that's, that's definitely not the case, but you know, if someone has a deal, you know, and, and they're new, I mean, sure, let's bring me in the deal and we'll, we'll, we'll talk about a deal, you know, and, and there's a partnership, maybe there's a partnership opportunity, you know, I mean, I, you know, there's, there's things, if, you know, in, in this market, in most markets now, the deals are the hard part. So, you know, if you bring me a deal, you, you know, you'll have my attention and we can talk about it. And maybe there's a partnership there, you know, so that's, that's one idea, you know. A great idea. 
Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Um, okay, our, my last question for you. If you could go back to your mid 20s year old self and with, you know, all the challenges and lessons that you've learned, what would you what would you say to yourself now? And is this real estate related? Or anything, <laughs> anything. <laughs> well, I'll keep I'll keep it on topic on real estate. Well, I wish, I mean, all those houses that I flipped, I should have just held them and you know, held them and you know, sold them 10 or 15 years later. I mean, that would be, you know, holding instead of making the quick buck, flipping, just hold everything and then get a property management, get property management in place immediately from day one, you know, and, and not listen to myself when myself would say, why well, hire a property manager when you can do it yourself? You know, the same thing like we just talked about, like that's the one of the easiest things to sub out and frees up so much time and so much emotional effort and, emotional energy, you know, so yeah, hold everything and property management early, property management from day one, you know, and I think I, I always, I grew up with my dad, he managed everything himself. And I think I had that in my blood for way too long, but uh, I, you need to treat property management just like you would like a utility bill or lawn cutting or, you know, cleaning and maintenance and, and uh, property taxes, you know, it's just a line item on your uh, profit and loss statement for a property. So, you know, if the property doesn't make sense with, by paying a third party property manager, then, you know, you're paying too much or the property isn't a good property. So, you know, you should just treat that expense as any other expense on your PL. So. That, that's wonderful. Thank you so much for your wisdom, for sharing um, your story and just for being someone that is like, you know, just so em empowering to other people and like I said just such an inspiration of like we can dream bigger like we can do more things and you know just all the pieces of advice and little nuggets that you dropped in there were, were just so good so um any departing thoughts oh man I don't know no uh, I think I hit it all everything that's kind of my my old you know my my, my standard is the is the get you know don't get rich quick, get rich for sure. And, you know, it's, it's buy and hold. And, you know, if it's, if it's single family, multifamily, just, you know, it's buy and hold something, you know? So if we're talking real estate and don't work too much, delegate when you can, you know, there's, you know, a badge. I know we treat uh, working 90 hours a week as a badge of honor, but I, I, I've done that and I disagree. I think it's, it's, there's nothing honorable about, about burning yourself out and, and working, you know, at three in the morning, just to say you work at three in the morning, you know, so. Great. I totally agree with you. Thanks for having me. So thank good. you. And so give your email one more time. So if people want to reach out to you. Yeah, with Tim, so T-I-M at Rise SLC and that's R-I-S-E S-L-C dot com. So awesome. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. And Tim, thanks so much for your time and thank sure. you for being here today. And if there's the Maven District website too, if anyone wants to see that, it's uh, Maven District SLC. So M A V E N D I S T R I C T S L C dot com. Maven District SLC dot com. And that, that shows um, some of our mixed use properties that you can take a look at. So awesome. Well, everyone, I hope that you have a great day. Tim, thanks again so much. And go and invest in property long-term. That's the biggest yes. advice that That's we it. heard today. Yes. <laughs> thanks, That's everyone, it. and have a great day. Okay. Thanks for having me.